How can you get your date to the start or end of a quarter period? Hello, I'm Philip Burton of IDoData.com. In previous videos, we had a look at how we can get to the start of a week, so week commencing, and also the start and end of a month. But how can you get to the start and end of a quarter? So for example, I've got a date here which is the 3rd of May, 2027. How can I get the 1st of April, 2027 and the 30th of June, 2027, which is the start and end of that three month quarter period? So what we need to do is get the right month. And to help us, I've created this little table which has got the numbers one to 12. So what I need to do is to categorize them into quarters. So I want these first three to be in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and then the last three in quarter four. So let's see how we can do this. Well, the obvious thing is to divide by three. So let's see what happens when we do that. So numbers divided by three. Now, are you thinking that we're going to get one third, two thirds, one, one and a third? If you are, then you haven't taken account of the fact that we have got integer division. So in SQL, if you divide five by two, you don't get two and a half, you get two. You've got an integer divided by another integer that equals an integer. So these will always be whole numbers or numbers without a decimal point in any case. But it's not quite right. We want these three to be grouped together. And at the moment, three to five are grouped together. So how can we get these grouped together? We can deduct one from our initial number. So we have zero, one, and two. Or we can add two to our initial number. So let's see what happens if we subtract one from our initial number. And we need the brackets because we want to subtract one and then divide by three. So now these are grouped together. So what I need to do now is to convert this into a month number. So now I need to multiply by three. So we've just divided by three, we're multiplying by three. It might seem like we're getting right back where we started, but we have got integer division now. So instead of having one third or two thirds multiplied by three, we've got zero multiplied by three. So now we have got zero, three, six, nine. What do we need? We need months one, four, seven, and 10. So what we need to do is add one to the end. So that gives us the month that we need. Now the alternative would be to add two to the number before dividing by three and then multiplying by three. So that gives us the end. This gives us three, six, nine, 12. To get to one, four, seven, and 10, we would then have to subtract two. Notice that we're doing the reverse of what we did initially. So we subtracted one, we now have to add one. We added two, we now have to subtract two to get back to where we were. So now we've got the formula for how to get the month. How do we then transplant it into our date? And in a previous video, we had a look at the formula date from parts. So what date from parts, which is all one word does, is it takes three arguments, the year, the month, and the day. So what's the year? Well, it's whatever the year of our date is. So we just put that in a year. What's the month? The month is what we've just calculated. So we'll put that into our equation, but we can't have the word numbers. We now need to have the month of this. So we'll put month here instead of year. And then what's the day? Well, the day is the first day of the month. So that's just a comma one. So we have got the year, our new month calculation based on this, and the day. So let's see if it works. And we go back to the 1st of April, 2027. Now you notice that all of the time component has not been introduced because we are getting date from parts. 
we're not taking anything relating to time from parts. Right, so that gives us the start of the quarter. How do we get the end of the quarter? Well, what we need to do is add two to the month. So again, let's just have exactly the same formula. And instead of plus one, we do plus three. Alternatively, what we could do is just have this because this gave us three, six, nine, and 12. So this would work just as well. But I'm going to keep the same formula for continuity reasons, except a different addition at the end. So we'll have this as the end of quarter. So let's run this and see what we've got. So far, so good. It gets us to the right month, but it doesn't get us to the right day. And the problem is some months have 28, 29, 30, and 31 days. Now we could do a case statement, case based on this month, give us the right day. However, there is an easier way. There is a function we can use. And that function is EOR month, end of month. So that just takes any day and gets us the end of the month. Now, you may have noticed that there seemed to be an error up there. It said that EO month is not a recognized function. You may get that error. Don't worry, it is a recognized function. So now, if I run this, we get the 1st of April to the 30th of June. So if I change this to August, we now get the right periods from July to September, change it again. We get October to December and notice in each case, we have the right end date. And then finally, if I change this to February, we have January to March. So this is how you can get the start and the end of a quarter. Now, if you found this interesting and would like additional assistance in learning SQL, then please have a look at my Udemy courses. Depending on how much time you've got, we have got around a 29 hour course, a nine hour course, and a one hour course. The one hour course will teach you the essentials of the select statement. Select from where, group by having, and order by. My nine hour course goes into more detail, including inserting, updating, and deleting existing data, creating backups, restoring data, joining two tables together, and creating constraints. In my 29 hour course, we'll go a lot deeper, including unions, case, merge, procedures, CTEs, pivots, user-defined functions, apply, synonyms, and much, much more. I've also got a course if you want to learn the Oracle version of SQL. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give it a like. And why not subscribe and click that bell? That way you'll be notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton of idodata.com. There are links to all of these courses in the description to this YouTube video. Thank you very much for watching and keep learning.